All right, today's lesson is going to be about du'a. Who can tell me what du'a is? It's a very important part of our religion. Raise your hand. Anybody. Du'a. What does du'a mean? Exactly. It's when you ask Allah for something, right? So linguistically, in the language of Arabic, du'a means to request something. And in Islam, it means to request something from Allah. When you need something, you turn to Allah and you ask Allah. Now the Prophet ﷺ, he said, this is a hadith that inshallah everyone can memorize. It's very simple. It's only three words in the Arabic language. He said, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. Does anyone know what that means? Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. Who thinks they can translate it? So du'a, very good. Du'a is... It's worship, but even more specifically, what does that definite alif lam indicate? What do we say for those who studied Arabic with us? It's the worship. Like, it's the worship. It's like, it's the worship to emphasize. Like, that it is the, you could maybe put in parentheses, the essence, the core of worship. Okay? So this is telling us the importance, the importance of dua, in our religion. Now, why do you think a statement like this is so powerful and so significant? What do we know about ibadah, about worship? Well, what would you say about worship in relation to the human being and our existence? How important is worship? You need it so you can get into Jannah. You need it so you can get into Jannah? How will we get into Jannah? Allah. Worshiping Allah? Allah alone. Very good. What is that ayah mean? وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ like, like, like he created the jinns and the humans just to worship them. Exactly. This, this is our purpose in life, right? Allah created us for no other reason except to worship Him alone. Okay? What did we say that worship means? To refer to him. Asking for forgiveness. That's an act of worship, asking for forgiveness. Exactly. Worship is a term that refers to everything that Allah loves. Okay? So why is this statement, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah, du'a is the essence of worship. Why is it such a significant statement? Because we were created to worship Allah. And from the essence of worshiping Allah is making du'a. So is du'a something that we should be doing? <laughs> yes, of course. It's one of the most important things for us to do. Right? So, do you guys make du'a? What, what, what are some things that we can ask Allah for? Like, let's say your family is like on a trip or they're like a truck driver. You wish them for like, so nothing happens to them. Excellent, yes. You ask Allah for safety. Jannah. For Jannah. Excellent. What else? Dua for your parents. Dua for your parents. Excellent. Why is it important to make dua to Allah? Other than just the fact that this is part of why we were created. But what is it about Allah that should make us ask Him for protection, ask Him for things that we want, ask Him to save us from things that we don't want. Because he, he is an ultimate power over everything, correct? If Allah wants something to happen, can anyone prevent it from happening? No. no. If Allah doesn't want something to happen, is there anyone that can make it happen? No. No, so ultimately Allah is the one that we should first and foremost ask for everything, right? So something else that the Prophet ﷺ said is that whoever does not ask Allah, whoever does not make dua to Allah and ask Him for what they need, then Allah is angry with them. Okay? So subhanAllah, that's very different than what we're used to in our daily lives, right? Like when we ask each other of things, you know, sometimes it can be difficult for us, but is anything difficult for Allah? No, right? Allah could give us everything that we ever asked for. Would that decrease anything that Allah has? No, because Allah is perfect in every way, free from every deficiency. All right, so if we don't make dua to Allah, what is that, implica- what is that sort of implying? All right, if you, if, you, if you don't ask Allah for something. And... Like that, um, you're not really worshipping Him. Like... Yeah, you're not worshipping Him as much as you should if you're not making dua, you're right? What else? You're not, out you're not calling out to Him? You're not remembering Him? You're not getting closer? You're not getting closer to Him? You think you're perfect. Right, you think that maybe you don't need Allah. 
right? But that couldn't be further from the truth. The Prophet ﷺ, he actually made dua to Allah that Allah not leave him to himself for the blinking of an eye. All right? Like, for example, our breathing, our hearts beating, our blood flowing, are these things that we ultimately control? No. No, these are things that Allah blesses us with, right? So we always need help from Allah. We are not self-sufficient. There's nothing that we can do except with the help of Allah. All right? So when we neglect asking Allah for things, then... Sometimes we can forget, so we need to try to remember, but it's, it's not thinking highly enough of Allah when we don't turn to Him and ask of Him. Okay? Also, if Allah is all-powerful and Allah can do anything for us, then there's, there's no reason we shouldn't ask Him, right? Because we're not bothering Him, we're not taking anything from Him, right? So we should always turn to Allah, we should always make dua to Allah. Okay, so there's a hadith where the Prophet, والسلام, he said that Allah said, O oh my servants, all of you are astray except those I have guided. So seek guidance of me and I shall guide you. O oh my servants, all of you are hungry except for those I have fed. So seek food from me and I shall feed you. O oh my servants, all of you are naked except for those I have clothed. So seek clothing from me and I shall clothe you. O oh my servants, you sin by night and by day and I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness for me and I shall forgive you. So who can tell me what Allah told us to ask him for in this hadith that I just mentioned? Who was paying attention and can recall? There's four things. Yes, food was the second thing mentioned, food. Forgiveness, that was the fourth thing. Leading us back to the straight path. Leading us back to the straight path. Close, very good. When it comes to the straight path, what's, what's the word for that specifically? Guidance. Guidance, very good. Guidance, right? So you remember last week we talked about the greatest surah in the Qur'an. What's the greatest surah in the Qur'an? The Fatiha. What did we say we ask Allah for in Surah Al-Fatiha? Do we make dua? Do we make a dua in Surah Al-Fatiha? No. Raise your hand if you think we make a du'a in Surah Al-Fatiha. What, what, what do we make du'a for in Surah Al-Fatiha? Guidance. guidance. Yes, we ask Allah for guidance, right? This, is, this shows us the importance. Because Surah Al-Fatiha is the greatest surah in the Qur'an. What's one of the uh, indications that it's the greatest surah of the Qur'an? Recite every Excellent. We have to recite it in every prayer. In every unit of every prayer, we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Right, so it's the greatest surah in the Quran. What else? Which, which, in which order does Surah Al Fatiha come in the in the Mus'haf in the Quran? The first surah. It's the first surah, right? What's a nickname for it that we mentioned before? Mother. Right, the mother of the Quran, Umm al Quran. Okay. So this is such an important surah, and what do we ask for in the surah? What's the What's the one thing that we ask for? Guidance. Guidance. Who knows the the ayah where we ask Allah for guidance? Excellent. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. We ask Allah to guide us where? A sirat al mustaqim. What does a sirat al mustaqim mean? The straight path, right? What does the straight path mean? All right, the straight path, it leads to Jannah. Right, it, guidance leads to paradise. It's basically Islam, right? So guide us to the straight path of Islam, the path of the prophets and messengers, the path of truth, the path of guidance. Okay, we mentioned food. Why is it important to ask Allah for food? Necessity. It's a necessity. You have to have food to live. Where does food come from? The earth. See, we're so... Exactly. It comes from the earth, right? How does it come from the earth? It grows. It grows. How does it grow? Seeds. How do seeds grow? There's one thing I'm looking for, one specific thing. Soil. Sunlight, yeah, soil. Water. water. Water, right? What kind of water? Water. Purify. Clean water. Rain. Water. Rain, right? Who sends rain down? Allah, right? Allah created the heavens and the earth. He created food. He's the one that sends down rain. We're so detached nowadays from this because we don't... Fa Does anyone farm here? Now we go to the store and buy it, right? Yeah. I mean, like, 
But it's but who's the one that provides us with food? Who's the one that sends down the rain? Allah. Allah, right? And we have to have food to live. People are always looking. Well, every day we we, we eat. What happens if you don't eat? You die. You can die eventually, but you also feel what? You feel hungry. You feel weak, right? So food is a blessing Allah has blessed us with. And we should ask Him for food and we should ask Him to put barakah, to bless our food and we should thank Him. What about clothes, right? Where do clothes come from? Wool. wool. Where does wool come from? Earth. Cotton. Where do these things come from? Animals. Right, they can come from animals, right? Like what's it, what's it called when you have like a... Uh, what's a cloth made out of animals? Uh, leather. Leather, right? There's leather. There's, there's wool from sheep. There's... Right, silk. There's what else? Silk is for, for women to wear. There is what else? Cotton, cotton plants, right? So what are some of the blessings when it comes to clothes? This is also something just like food. Like we're so used to having such an abundance of food nowadays. Sometimes we are unappreciative. We should make sure that we are appreciative and we thank Allah. Same with clothes. I mean, how, how many of us have more, far more clothes than we need to the extent that in this society they have bins where you can give your clothes away, right? It wasn't always like that. Why, why, what, what are some of the blessings when it comes to having clothes? Keeps you warm, right? If it's very cold, what happens if you don't have clothes to cover yourself? You're sick and die. You can freeze to death. Hyperthermia. Hyperthermia. Okay, frostbite. Or your skin could be in the sun and then get you sunburned. Right, or it also protects you from the sun, from the heat. Right, if you don't cover, you know, your skin, you can get skin cancer, you can get sunburn. What else? <laughs> what else? Right, you can you cover yourself, right? We don't, certain parts of ourselves we need to cover from one another, right? So what else? Anything else? Anyone into fashion? Oh, I know. You guys, you guys, right? It's also a way to like beautify yourself, right? To look nice. There are special occasions. You know, if there's like a wedding or a party or a gathering or something. Right? Who likes to get dressed up for, for gatherings and weddings and stuff? Anyone? Nobody. Okay. So one, two people. Okay. What else about the way somebody's dressed is... Uh, what else? Like, what if somebody sees me dressed like this? What is it? You can express yourself, right? You can show that you're a Muslim or that you're from a particular country, right? So these are all blessings from having, having clothes, okay? And then what about forgiveness? Allah says, so Allah blesses us with all of these things. Yet what do we do? What does Allah tell us in this hadith that we do? Yeah, we sin, right? Allah blesses us with countless blessings, yet still, what do we do? We still sin, we still transgress, right? But Allah tells us to do what? To ask, for to ask Him for forgiveness. And He said He'll do what if we ask Him for forgiveness? He'll forgive us, He'll forgive us right? Help us establish Straight Path Academy, the full-time Islamic school coming to Jacksonville, Florida, and receive countless rewards in the hereafter for every beneficial thing taught to our children. A sadaqa jariya reward that will continue even after we're gone, inshallah. Jazakum Allahu khairan.